All right, uh, it's day three at NVIDIA GTC, and look who are with me, Vinay and Michael. Vinay from Zataris, Michael from Atachi. Very much uh, happy to chat with both of you today on the Ravit Show. Uh, just for our audience, uh, before we kick in and learn more about you know what's happening at NVIDIA, what's happening in the AI world, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure, let me go first. I'm Vinay Samuel. I'm the CEO and founder of Zataris. Fantastic. Hi, I'm Michael Haig. I'm uh, Vice President of Technology and Research for Itachi Ventura. Fantastic. So it's it's day three, and uh, we've been you know seeing a lot of crowd coming in, a lot of enterprises coming in as well, like the leaders. Uh, what are what what are you guys hearing about? Uh, would you like to share a little with our audience as well? Yeah, sure. Let, let me go first. So the, the, the thing that really strikes me is the amazing pace of AI take up across every industry like I mean we've all been talking about it but to see it in action from hospitals to telcos to manufacturers we've had right. all sorts of industries walk up to our booth um, and, and they're all into how do we solve the data management problem right um, so just being struck by the reality of, of the hunch we had that data is going to be important to AI has really struck me here. And, and on a more basic level, just how big this conference is, there's just people everywhere. It's, right. It's amazing. You, know? I mean, Fantastic. you guys are super crowded at your booth. Right? Yep, that's exactly true. I would say some of the lines look bigger than those at Tokyo and Disney, just for the session. So it's kind of fantastic to see like people that love math and love science standing in line to kind of get the goods. And uh, the other thing that I think is the diversity of interest. Like so we've had mm. people come by and talk about like, hey, AI is going to take everybody's job. To like, I just need some infrastructure to help me solve my problems. And then yes, there's been some data-related activities since we're also a data company. And it's, it's been great to kind of be able to cross over and talk to some of the different startups as well and kind of connect between them. Okay, that's awesome. Uh, I would also love to know a little about, you know, Zetaris and Itachi angle. Uh, how do you guys work together? What's uh, the angle there? If you could share a little bit about that. Michael? I, I will start with that. So yes. Hitachi offers some cool storage stuff. That's our, our lineage in this area. We're a bigger company, so we make things like trains and microscopes and storage. Right. And uh, in this particular case, uh, Vinay and I sort of started some effort to integrate. So we have the ability for Vinay's products and services to talk to our storage mm -hmm. and help kind of our customers do a really good job together at managing data. Okay, fantastic. Absolutely. Look, I'll just you know second that, right? So we're providing the application layer to actually manage the query and right. provide data access to the data. And we need fast equipment, right? If you're going to be doing data analytics in real time and 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 reach any data anywhere, you can't do that slow and you can't do that in a low availability way. Yeah. You need high availability. You need reliance and scalability. Yep. And that's why great companies like Hitachi makes a lot of sense to our enterprise customers and future customers. Very good. Uh, thanks for sharing those insights. Also, quickly, since we are on this topic, obviously, I'm hearing a, like I talk to a lot of enterprise leaders as well, and most of the times they kind of feel that sometimes we are kind of you know we don't know what's exactly happening in AI. Uh, but how how are you looking at those things? How what, like what's your advice for those enterprise leaders when it comes to AI? Would you like to share something, Michael? Sure. First thing is write a business plan. A lot of people are racing to buy things. You know, there's a, a lovely plural site survey that talked about enterprise leaders, like 80, 70, 80 percent of them are concerned people are going to buy things and they kind of have stuff sitting around, not doing anything, no people trained. So you're really getting people trained, thinking about what problems they're solving, and then, you know, really paying attention to what they need to purchase to solve those problems. Yeah. You know, no, I think those simple. are fantastic insights. And that's something, you know, at the base level itself, if you kind of understand and create a business plan, it right. becomes easier as well. Also, when anything fast and cheap. That's the last thing. Yeah, absolutely. You're right. And scale up, right? Yeah. Well, well, the thing that's really struck me is the more you can get the business people closer to the data, the more you're going to under, un, underwrite success, mm. right? Uh, we've struggled in the BI in the world where um, the interpretation of the business rules gets somehow muddled up during the project. Very and, true. and the project delivers something that doesn't match the business. The great opportunity with enterprise AI is the business people can talk directly to the data. And that's why we've invested heavily with this conversational AI uh, that we call Gen Z. Gen Z. Right? Where business people can actually write English or their preferred language to write queries 
running on Hitachi equipment, right? Whereas in the past, you'd need an army of data engineers um, intermediating and, and trying to interpret. I think that's important, but for the data engineers, using AI to really crystallize those business rules. Love it, um, yeah. No, I think uh, definitely this sounds amazing, and I, I've, I've checked out Gen Z. Like, I saw your talk yesterday, and it was amazing. So thanks, thanks for sharing that. Uh, one last question for both of you. Since uh, we are in this AI world, I, I can't talk about, because things are changing very rapidly, I can't talk about the next six months as well, but in the next three months, or okay, let's go for six months, where do you see it moving and uh, how do you see the future? That's a big question, right? So, <laughs> let me, the first thought that comes into my mind is, is to really solve for the interface. And what I mean is the human and the AI and getting that right. Mm, I, I don't wow. see a good future where AI just replaces a human. I can see a lot of risk in that. Yeah. But, but I think there's a mix issue, mix. getting the right mix and the right um, interaction and the right point by which AI uh, behaves as that trusted co-pilot. I think in the next five to six months, you're going to see a lot of um, development, a lot of uh, research around that human AI interface. Fantastic. Michael, what do you think? I would second that. Yes. So at the end of the day, you know, AI is for people. And that's, a, that's kind of a missing theme is like AI is not for AI. And that you can get trapped in that. So how to make that a reality, and what, as Vinay described it, is, is what is that interface? How do you have a helper? And how do you kind of move towards thoughtful outcomes with the AI? And that maybe that's the big thing, the big change is it gives you the opportunity to like let the simple go, but then really think about how you have to solve some problems. Love it. And that's what, you know, to be honest as well, that's what I get a lot of questions around that as well, that will AI replace the jobs? Is content creation going to be like difficult? Uh, will AI not play anything, any role in that? But these are exactly what uh, it should look like. It's going to make you smarter. Uh, Precisely. Yes. So uh, for our audience as well, now you know AI is not going to uh, replace you in any way. So stay secure, but then get on the AI journey and make it better That's right. in your jobs. This was great, uh, Michael, Vinay. Thanks, thanks, so much. thanks a Thank lot uh, for visiting the Ravid Show. I'm pretty sure our audience would also love to know if they want to reach out to you, which is the best place. Is it LinkedIn? LinkedIn. LinkedIn yeah, is yeah. the best? LinkedIn, uh, Zataris.com. Uh, okay. We've got plenty of resources there. We've got demos, we've got learning tools. Uh, yeah, just head there and you can learn a lot about this. Stuff. Fantastic. I'm going to share those links. I'm going to tag you guys. So if they want to reach out, they can reach out to you guys. Thank you very much Thank once you. again. Thank, Thank you, everyone. Much.